Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another beautiful day. Today, we're going to be looking at the difference between expanded form and expanded notation. And with expanded notation, we're going to be looking at decimals and fractions. Now, if you remember back to the first video that you watched, you would remember that you do have this foldable that you created. Um, and in that foldable, you have the breakdown for the decimals in, expand, in standard form, expanded um, and um, standard form, <laughs> expanded notation for decimals, and expanded notation for fractions. So don't forget that you have this as a resource if you need it. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to look at a specific number. And I almost forgot. There goes my camera for a second. We're going to break down a basic number and look at how it looks in standard form, expanded form, expanded notation with decimals, and expanded notation with fractions. So the number that I have is 341 and 627 thousandths. Okay. So step by step, expanded form. I need to know what the value of this three is. Well, I have 300, so three times 100 is 300. The value of this four, it's four tens, so four times 10 is 40. I have one one, one times one is one. Now, six tenths, I have six tenths, so six times a tenth is decimal six. 2 times a hundredth is two hundredths, which is decimal zero, 02. And thousandths, 7 times one thousandth is decimal zero, zero, 007. Okay. So now we need to look at expanded notation with decimals. Now expanded notation is when you are taking each of these pieces and you are creating an equation that equals your original number. So how did I find the value of this 3? Well I multiplied 3 times 100. I'm going to need to add it to how I found the value of the 4, which I multiplied 4 times 10. Add that to 1 times 1 added to 6 times one-tenth added to two times one-hundredth added to seven times one-thousandth. If you multiplied three times a hundred, you would get three hundred. Four times ten is forty. One times one is one. Six times one tenth is decimal is six tenths. Two times one hundredth is two hundredths. Seven times one thousandth is seven thousandths. So now we have expanded notation in de with decimals. Now we need to look at this with fractions. Well, there's really no fraction for your whole number, so they're going to stay three times 100 
plus 4 times 10 plus 1 times 1 plus, now this is when we're getting into our fractions. We're still going to have 6 because we have 6 of these in this place, but instead of 1 tenth written as a decimal, I need to multiply it by 1 tenth written as a fraction, which is simply 1 over 10, 1 tenth, plus 2 times 1 hundredth, which is 1 over 100, plus 7 times 1 thousandth, 7 times 1 over 1,000. Okay. All right, so now let's take a look at this with a real life example, a potential question that you may come up to. Amelia's dog gained 27 and 23,000th pounds in five months. What is the dog's weight gain in expanded form and expanded notation, decimals and fractions? Okay. I've read it once, now I'm going to go back and read it again and break down some of this information. Amelia's dog gained 27 and 23 thousandth pounds in five months. What is the dog's weight gain in expanded form and expanded notation, decimals and fractions? All right, so they've already given us the standard form, 27 and 23 thousandths pounds. So I'm even going to write standard form above that. And now I need to look at expanded form. And remember, expanded form is where you are adding the values of each together. So that's pretty straightforward. So I have 27 and 23 thousandths pounds. I'm going to start with my largest place value. The value of this 2 is 2 times, it's in the tens place, so 2 times 10, and 2 times 10 is 20, plus 7 times 1 because it's in the ones place, we can even label this, Hun er, sorry, tens, ones, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So two times 10 is 20, seven times one is seven. Then we have zero times a tenth, which is zero. You don't have to put it in there. You can leave this one out. It's up to you, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in. And I'm actually going to use a different color to remind myself that this is just a placeholder. Okay, so there's my placeholder, which zero times a tenth is still zero because anything times zero is zero. Plus two times one hundredth is two hundredths plus three times one thousandth is three thousandths. So now we have this beautiful equation. If we added 20 plus seven plus zero plus two hundredths plus three thousandths, we would get a total of 27 and 23 thousandths. Now we need to do this for expanded notation in decimals and fractions. Easy, not a problem. Again, I'm going to start with 27 and 23 thousandths. And remember, when you're looking at expanded notation, you're figuring out what computation you are needing to do to find the value. So there is a two in the tens place, so two times 10, plus seven in the ones place, seven 
times one plus, remember this is just a placeholder, but you can do it anyway, zero times one tenth, because there's nothing in that place, plus two times one hundredth, plus three times one thousandth. So now we're just decomposing this. How did we come up with the value of 20? Well, it was two times 10. How did we come up with the value of seven? Seven times one, all the way down. So we've done it with our decimals. Now we need to do it with fractions. 27 and 23 thousandths. And remember, just like when we looked up here, our whole numbers, the ones to the left of the decimal, are going to be exactly the same. So we can just copy this down. Two times 10 plus seven times one. Oop. Now we're getting into where we had decimals before and now we need to change this to fractions. I have zero tenths, so I'm multiplying zero times one tenth plus two times one hundredth plus three times one thousandth. And there we have it. We have written the weight gain of Amelia's dog in expanded form, in expanded notation with decimals, and expanded notation with fractions. Okay. When you come across problems that say they give you a number and they say which of the following is this number in expanded form or expanded notation, you need to write out that number yourself in that form and then compare. Don't just go, oh, well, I know it, and choose the first one that you think is probably the best answer, because I can guarantee you there's going to be something in that answer that will have tricked you. Every time you work out these problems, I expect to see you writing out the form. That is your proof. That is your work to show me. Okay. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you next time.